Well, a, a question that Milton himself wouldn't have asked, and Milton was steeped in the scriptures, right? Um, why, uh, my, my gosh, why would, you, uh, why would you read anything at all? It's the greatest poem ever written in the English language. Um, Milton wrote it with all of the epics of the pagan past in mind, and he wrote it as the epic that would crown all of the epics. Um, he's learned from Virgil, he's learned from Homer, he's learned from Dante, uh, from the, his uh, predecessor in English poetry, Edmund Spencer, he learned from all of them, and he says to himself, I'm going to write an epic too. I'm going to write an epic which for its subject matter will merit for me the crown of all uh, uh, epic poetry. Um, I will soar, he says, above the Aeonian Mount, above Homer, uh, while my muse pursues things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme. It's the greatest subject to write about it. It's the ultimate epic subject. He's got it. It's from Genesis. Why not write it into a great poem, right? Just as, why, why not paint it in, in a great cycle of paintings? Paint Genesis, as Michelangelo did on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. But he's taking things that aren't in Genesis. He's, uh, he's creating an imaginary world. He's giving bodies to uh, fallen angels. I mean, uh, how can one uh, do that sort of thing in, in literature? But what, what right does he have to do that sort of thing? He has the right of being a human being. Um, it is how human beings think and learn. We, uh, we picture things. We have to. Now, um, if you ask whether we should or whether we are permitted to make any images uh, of events or personages from scripture, that's already been settled. Um, we we uh, got through the iconoclasm controversy in uh, the, uh, was it, the eighth century AD. Um, so the Catholics accept with John of Damascus that this is a perfectly proper and appropriate thing to do. Because after all, uh, it happens in scripture, things are pictured for us in scripture, and then the word was made flesh and dwelt among us as a man. Um, so then why not use all human means available? We're not Muslims. Why not use all the arts available to make the Christian story appear to people, to appear before their eyes? They are going to read stories anyway. Why should then they not read this great literature inspired by Genesis? Well, um, unfortunately, uh, Milton, Milton never, Milton's ecclesiology, let's say, is something that's um, not even a work in progress. It's about as thin as you can get and, and still call yourself Christian. He doesn't have any sense that the uh, Christian life is to be lived among other Christians in a community. He is saying to Adam, Michael is saying to Adam, that if you walk humbly before your God, you confess your sins, you try to follow the commandments of God, you worship him in, uh, in humility and truth, then you will possess within yourself a paradise, a paradise within thee you will have, happier far. Um, well, there is a sense in which that is quite true. Uh, the, a paradise is literally an enclosed garden. The uh, enclosed garden in the middle of Eden was a beautiful and wonderful thing, but it is perhaps not so beautiful and wonderful as the enclosed garden of a Christian heart that uh, now confesses its sins and its complete dependence upon God and walks humbly with God. That, 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 that may be a greater thing even than what Adam enjoyed uh, on earth before the sin. Not the state of Adam's soul before the sin, but the, the garden, so to speak, in which he dwelled, if that makes sense. So it's not, it's still something shared with God, not entirely interior, not entirely. Oh, no, no, it's, 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 that's right. It's, yeah. it's, without God, it doesn't exist. Right? Just as without God, the world around us doesn't exist. Now, a Catholic would come at it and say, well, listen, no, what, we, what we need here, the new, the new garden upon earth that we need is the garden of the church, the garden of a community of worshipers. That's the, um, that's the new 
provisional Eden, so to speak. Um, the eternal Eden, of course, is not either one. It's not either the church militant upon earth or the state of the soul of the Christian believer who is walking humbly before his God, as Milton imagines it. The, the ultimate Eden is the New Jerusalem, that, that paradise. Um, Milton would have agreed with that. Uh, in, in that sense, he would be with Catholics. But, um, you know, I, I, I give him some... Uh, I give him some credit here. Uh, there, there, there are important ways in which the human soul, having repented of its sins and accepting the grace of God, is a more wonderful creation than was the unfallen Adam. Um, uh, though I, I'm I'm a little bit hesitant to go f so far as to say that it was uh, fortunate that Adam sinned. That, that's, that's, that's another step I don't exactly want to take, although we say, and Milton echoes it, um, we say in the Exultat on Easter Eve, O oh, happy fault, O oh, necessary sin of Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Milton echoes that at the end of Paradise Lost, too, that gained for us so great a Redeemer. Well, what would have happened had Adam not sinned, and how we would have encountered Christ had Adam not sinned, that's, I think, not open to us for any uh, speculation. We are not told the would-have-been story.